everyone, my name is Candace Grover Harmon and I am the owner of Building Blocks Financial Solutions. So with Building Blocks Financial Solutions, we offer services and tax preparation, credit restoration, as well as life and health insurance. But our most important goal is to educate people. So we're all about financial literacy and making sure you understand how to make your money work for you. So today I'm going to bring to you a quick little snippet, some tips and strategies on how to survive during COVID-19. This pandemic has took us all in a whirlwind. We've all experienced life differently than what we're used to. But today I'm gonna to bring some tips and strategies that you can implement um, on a daily basis to try and help make your money work for you a little bit better. All right, so surviving in a pandemic, tips and strategies to make the most out of your money during COVID-19. Because like I said before, COVID-19 has definitely changed the way that we're living. And some of us may have lost our jobs. Some of us are now working part-time. Our financial situation has changed. So here are some tips and strategies that you can try and implement to make your financial situation a little bit better. So tip number one, you need to have a budget. If you haven't already created a budget before, it's very simple. Um, but if you have, you want to revisit it primarily because you want to know where your money is going and you want to account for every single penny that's in your household. So number one, create a budget. Once you've created that budget, you want to pay yourself first. So many times we get caught up in just saying, oh, well, this bill is due. Oh, I have to pay this person. Oh, I have to pay that. But we never worry about paying ourselves. So it's very important that you create a line item that specifically goes to a savings account just for you. Another thing you want to do in your budget is eliminate unnecessary expenses. So you may have unused subscriptions, such as if you have an extra Netflix or Hulu account that you don't use. You may have those games on your phone or certain apps that you pay monthly on that you no longer use. Cancel those because you're just throwing away money at this point. And then another expense that you possibly could reduce or eliminate altogether is eating out or shopping. We've all been stuck at home. Right now, I'm kind of cute. However, I've been in yoga pants and like sweats and a t-shirt for the past four months. So I know I haven't really bought any clothes lately, but that is a major expense that I typically spent a lot of money on. But I've been able to save so much money in terms of just not shopping as well as cooking at home. So that's another thing that you can possibly do in terms of reducing that particular expense. Also, when creating your budget, be sure to look at your electric cable and phone bill. Those bills come around every month and just call those companies and see if you're able to get on some type of payment arrangement. A lot of them are very lenient in terms of helping you or working with you, excuse me, in terms of making payments later and this way you're able to stretch your money a little bit longer because you know that you have a payment arrangement that you have to pay every so often, maybe twice within the month. Other useful ways that you can cut your expenses and save, now that it's getting a little bit colder outside, you can actually keep your house a little bit cooler and that helps with the electricity. They say about 68 degrees within your house, so set your thermostat at 68 degrees and it's a savings during the winter. Another tip is to use coupons. There's a number of ways to coupon. You can do it digitally. You can get a newspaper every Sunday and cut out coupons, but all those are savings. So if you're able to use coupons as well as when you go out to eat. So that way that's a saving if you do decide to dine out with family. There's other options of carpooling and catching a ride with others. Again, you can cancel those gym memberships that you haven't been using and find alternatives to working out at home. YouTube is a great alternative, but then you can also find like other little household items that you're able to use. That old jump rope that the kids aren't using or a hula hoop. And then lastly, another very useful way that you can cut, my, cut down on your expenses is with Christmas coming up, spend less on gifts for friends and family. I know everybody wants a gift and you wanna make sure everybody gets one. However, we're in a pandemic. 
So I think everyone's a little bit understanding that they may or may not get a gift this year. But if you do decide to buy gifts, make sure that you're looking for the most cost-effective way to buy gifts. So buy things that's on sale or on clearance. So which bill should you pay first? By no means this is how you should actually pay your bills in terms of priority. This is just a suggestion. You are aware of your financial situation and how your debt is set up. So this is just a recommendation in terms of priority. So with the highest priority, like I said before, you want to pay yourself. So you want to make sure that you set aside money for a savings in which I'll discuss that a little bit later. Um, if you are in the church, you want to make sure that you pay your tithes. So make sure you set aside money for that. But then you also on the highest priority is to ensure that you pay for your rent or mortgage, food and transportation. But then a medium priority, you have utilities, insurance, debt, school and childcare. Now school and childcare, that is very important. And if you have to pay for that, please move that to the highest priority side. But like I said, this is just a recommendation. And then you have on the lowest priority is medical expenses, clothing and entertainment. The last two, clothing and entertainment, that's a giveaway. We can kind of live without those or find alternatives for it. But in terms of medical expenses, please go to the doctor if you feel as if something is wrong or that you may be exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19. Um, but when you go, ask for them to bill you. So that way you can actually pay that bill at a later date and you don't have to come up off of that money all at once. Be sure to give your insurance card though if you have insurance. Another tip is that you definitely want to manage your debt and reduce your liabilities during COVID-19. So what is liabilities? Liabilities is money taken out of your pocket. You may have also heard of the opposite of it, which is assets, in which assets put money in your pocket, okay? Um, but your common liabilities usually are your car loans, your mortgage, credit cards, and any other consumer loan that you may have. So you want to make sure that you reduce those liabilities and if you're able to tackle those first and pay it down to a zero balance. So that way you have extra money once you pay that bill and then you can put that towards your savings. But the important thing about managing your debt and reducing your liability is protecting your credit score. And by doing that, you want to take advantage of the hardship programs that a number of companies are offering at this particular time. And with the hardship program, it's basically just saying that at this particular moment, I'm in a bind and I need you to help me out. Um, most companies are very lenient right now in terms of helping their consumers. So when you call your lender, you wanna be sure to ask the following. Ask them if there's payment options, a different payment option. Ask about reducing your interest rate, or you can ask for a reduction in the minimum payment due. All these will help stretch your money a little bit longer because in the overall, you're going to be actually paying them a little bit less than what you're actually paying on that particular bill right now. Now, when you do call your lender, you have to be prepared to explain what your financial situation is right now, as well as your employment situation. So if you're working or not, how much you're able to afford and when you'll be able to restart the payments at the usual um, payment rate that you usually pay. But all this is to say, call, call, call them and ask about the hardship program because some of them could have possibly just say, oh, no, you don't have to pay right now but you won't know until you ask. So it's very important that you take advantage of it and call and ask about the hardship program. Savings. This is a big one in terms of preparing yourself and surviving during COVID-19. COVID-19 caught a lot of us suddenly and a lot of us didn't have anything stashed away. And which that's why it's very important for you to figure out a way that you're able to save some money some way, somehow. Get an extra hustle going. Probably don't get that coffee that you usually get. You just gotta have to be creative in terms of having ways to find that extra money. But it's very important that you save and have an emergency fund. 
um, with at least three to six months to cover any necessary necessities. Because as you can see on the left hand side, there's a number of reasons why we would need an emergency fund. We could possibly lose our job. We can possibly get sick, a major home repair. Maybe our car is broken and we need to get that fixed. Or we have to suddenly take care of a, lo of, of a loved one. Now, number one and number two, that caught a lot of us by surprise with COVID-19. So that alone tells you that you need an emergency fund because you just never know what's going to happen. Now, here are some ways that you would be able to possibly trick yourself into saving for an emergency fund. When you create your budget, create a line item that's specifically for emergency fund. Treat it as a bill. So that way, if you treat it as a bill, you know that you're going to pay it, okay? Um, make it automatic. So when I say make it automatic, that means that you would set up a bank account, go and get that routing and account number, take it to your HR department, and then set it up as a direct deposit. So once you set it up as a direct deposit, that money is automatically coming out. So you never have to worry about actually transferring that money over. It's automatically done for you. So that way, it takes the thought process out of it. Another option is once you get paid, take some money out and put it on a prepaid card. So that way you have a card specifically for anything that's emergency related. Now it's up to you to make sure that you don't use that card for anything else. But at least you know that you have a free credit card that that money is used specifically for emergency situation. And then you have the old fashioned way, just take out some cash and stash it somewhere in the house. Um, of course, we all know we've done it before, put it under the bed, hide it in the closet, just make sure that it's safe and that you can account for it. And another thing that COVID-19 has brought a lot of us to is to find a hustle or start hustling um, because ultimately we need to make extra money and increase our assets. That is the only way that we're gonna be able to save for that emergency fund and make sure that we're able to budget our money accordingly. So in order to survive the pandemic, turn your hobby into another stream of income. Some of us may have had a lot of downtime on our hands and we have picked up new hobbies. So if you're into making jewelry, go ahead and sell it online. If you're into painting, make a painting and then sell it. There's a number of things that you're able to do that you can turn into another stream of income. Um, there's a lot of things in our homes that we don't use. And especially with Christmas coming up, we know that we're gonna get even more things. So find unused and unwanted items in your house and start selling them. You have Facebook Marketplace, you have Craigslist, you have the flea market. There's a number of ways that you're able to sell those unwanted items and make some extra cash. Um, you can pick up a gig. You have Uber, DoorDash, babysitting, pet sitting, and tutoring. Um, all those are just offering a service to someone else. And one thing that I'm gonna share with you guys is that pet sitting is big business. I never realized that so many people are looking for people to just watch their animals and which you can make like almost $15 an hour. So if you're an animal lover, definitely look into it. And then lastly, you can always start a business. There's a number of businesses that's out there that you're able to start. So just pick one. And if you're interested, start it. There's nothing wrong with doing something new. And then I'm gonna close with you on this. Um, knowledge is power and you have to save for your future. And by doing that, I offer this book, Saving Your Future, and which is available. So if you're interested, please contact me. Again, my name is Candace Grover Harmon and here are my contact information. So if you would like to get a copy of Saving Your Future to learn a little bit more about Finance 101 in terms of how to powerfully save for a rainy day, life insurance, how to save for your kids' college funds, um, all that is offered in that book in which I'm able to provide a copy for you. But those are a little bit of tips and strategies that you can possibly imp implement in terms of surviving COVID-19. If you have any further questions, please contact me. 
If you possibly need tax preparation coming up soon, I'm available for that as well. Thank you again. Have a good one.